Mrs. Simpson Miller, you have had quite a journey on the road of time. Certainly many lasting memories. What's that one particular moment that stands out for you? My first was the night of the local government elections when I contested for the strongest division for the GLP in the constituency. And at the end of the counting, I became the winner of the strongest GLP division in the island. The people asked me if I would stand. I gained a lot of support because people were saying, and at, at that time, I had my hair natural like yours. I was slim like your finger. Yes, you were as all slim I, as my finger. Oh, Lord. <laughs> all I had was a heavy head of hair then. And they were saying, my God, she could have been my daughter or granddaughter. Come me pick me. <laughs> and so they would hold my hand and take me to the other persons in their yard. And I said, you see this girl? We must give her our support. So 40 years later and going through that journey, what is the highlight you would say then of that journey and where it has taken you to today? Well, my journey that I always think about is the girl from Woodhall that ended up in Jamaica House as Prime Minister. And it is not only a journey for me, but a journey for all the girls in this country, the children now in school, and the women of this country who will now know that they too can achieve what they want to achieve in life. Mm -hmm. Because it's a very important journey. Looking back though, did you truly expect to get this far to a place where no other Jamaican woman has been? I never thought for one moment that I would ever become Prime Minister of Jamaica. Never. I know what I liked to do then was always trying to Im improve my education. And like with a TUC, I usually go to Jamaica Commercial Institute in the evenings, where I took the Pittman London exam and got my 100 word per minute shorthand. Mm -hmm. So mine was always trying to see what more I could do in terms of my personal education. Right. And I think that was very good. My father named me from the Merchant of Venice. And that's why my name is Portia Lucretia. Because Lucretia was Portia's secretary. And he said he was going to name his first daughter Portia. And when the first girl came, he said, no, this is not Portia. Second girl came, no, not Portia, boys and boy. And then Portia. And he's, no, and another girl. And then he said, when I was born, he said, when they said he could now see the baby, he said, this is Portia. He wanted me to be a lawyer, mm -hmm. but I ended up being more than a lawyer because I became the first female prime minister of Jamaica. And I believe that his spirit must have been celebrating that night when it was announced. Tell us about the influence that Rex Nickelford had on your life. Well, Prof called me to come and see him. And I went, and Prof said to me, Portia, I would love for you to do your program here at UWE. But you know what? I prefer if you do it overseas. He handed me an, an envelope and said, this is a letter to Professor Lar at Union Institute and University. You are to be in classes one day per week from morning until evening. So you catch the first plane out and the flight coming back. That's how I got my bachelor's. 
Education is very important. My father was not a very educated man, but he knew enough to know that his children should be given a good education. Yes. And even if you get up and say your tummy is hurting, you still have to go to school. <laughs> so he, he believed firmly. He was uh, an ardent supporter of Norman Washington Manley. Mm -hmm. And all of that was because of education and Norman Manley's push in terms of agriculture and helping the farmers. Mm -hmm. You go as far as using your own money to fund other people's children education. Yes, in the constituency. Yes. I do, because I feel that, uh, as Norman Manley said once, show me a prosperous nation, and I show you an educated people. And what I want for my constituency is for the young people in the constituency to achieve quality education. The good thing about it is that those that I continue to pay their fees. In the evenings when they get home from school, they take like the children who would be sitting for um, CXC and so, they take them and help them. So they, they also give back because of what I've done for them. You help other students outside of your constituency or is oh, it yes. just your constituency? Yes, no. We help outside. There was a young man from St. Thomas that, that we did, and I did, um, a young lady as well. Uh, there are times when they give testimonials, and then the Porsche Foundation assist uh, if a student should be in trouble financially and cannot pay their university fees, mm -hmm. then the foundation would pay the fees. What are your views on the strides that Jamaican women have made in the society over the years? I think they have made great strides. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, we had men occupying certain positions. Mm -hmm. And they would have, uh, they, would, they would really go to school for different, different areas, while the women would be mainly teachers and so on. But it came to a stage where the women of Jamaica said, no more. We are now medical doctors. We are now doctors by way of our education, mm -hmm. where they get the doctorate. And they are, women are in every field in this country. No one can complain about the achievements of our women. I think we can do more, but I think that the women came into their own mm -hmm. and started to push themselves in a serious way. You go to the universities, the women are there. Mm -hmm. Teacher training colleges, the women are there. Name it, any profession, you find a woman. Don't, don't you think we have a long way to go as it relates to equality matters? Or well, matters that is equality? true, but part of the challenge is that some of the women do not come into their own quickly and push themselves. Because sometimes you have to push yourself. When I had to go to Jamaica Commercial Institute and I get my homework, when I got home, before I have dinner, I would do my homework. Then I can have dinner. Mm -hmm. But for the women of Jamaica, there are a number of outstanding women making a valuable contribution to the development of this country. And you don't think that Some have made and they are still making. Some have made and they are still making. Keeping them down in any way or form. You For don't me, mm -hmm. most of the Jamaican women will not allow their men to keep them back. Because <laughs> they want to earn as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll point out most of the time, mm -hmm. if you're working and I am working, then we will be able to do more for ourselves and for the children. Even your harshest critics would agree that there has been a special love affair between you and the Jamaican people. In fact, we have not seen that with many other politicians and the Jamaican people. Why do you think people across Jamaica love you so much? I think 
people recognize love when they see love and they know when you're genuine from when you're just putting on. I was brought up with a lot of love in the district that I was brought up, Woodhall. And um, I think those of us who were brought up in rural Jamaica would face the same things where the adults would look out for every child, which gave true meaning to the African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. That was the kind of experience I got, I had when I was a girl growing up, mm -hmm. going to primary school. Some politicians sometimes do not pay enough attention to their people, and I love to hug. So when I see my people, I don't care how they are, I'm going to embrace them. They made me MP. And um, the fact that they supported me for so many years means that I owe them my gratitude, but most of all, my love and support. You have also met a lot of politicians from all over the world. Is there any one leader you have met that um, you admire and why? I met a number of them that I admired. I remember my visit to, with Fidel, Fidel Castro. Mm -hmm. And um, he would not let me go. We keep on talking and talking and talking and talking. And even when one of his functionaries went to the door and like would be giving him a signal to stop. He just turned fully now to me and ignored totally. <laughs> so even if they come to the door now, he's not seeing them. <laughs> so, but we chatted and we chatted and we chatted and we chatted. So I couldn't see Raul and I had an appointment to see him as well for a courtesy call. Right. So the following day when I went to Raul, he said to me, oh, you spent all of that time with Fidel last night. So why you stayed with him so long? I said, because he is a husband. So if he was a husband, who am I? I said, you're the boyfriend. <laughs> and he laughed and he laughed and he laughed. So, but um, I think meeting a number of the, the, the leaders and I was able to have gotten President Obama mm -hmm. to visit with us, that I think was also a very important visit mm -hmm. for Jamaica, particularly at that time. And we've had the Japanese visiting with us. We have had leaders from all over mm -hmm. that visited with us. And um, I think that it augurs well for Jamaica that so many world leaders visited mm -hmm. Jamaica, particularly during my time as Prime Minister. You have announced a date, a departure date that is, as President of the People's National Party and as leader of the opposition. Are you satisfied with the state in which you're leaving your party, your beloved party, that is? Well, I took it to a certain level. It is a responsibility not only of the party leader, but all the leaders of the party mm -hmm. to ensure that the party remains vibrant and strong. If anyone can say anything about me as party leader, I worked very hard. I did more constituencies than anyone else could have done in the last election. Mm -hmm. I was all over the place without drinking a sip of water or eating anything mm -hmm. until I get home sometimes three, four in the morning. And at that time you can't eat. Right. So I did my very best for the People's National Party. And I got a lot of support from people on the ground as well. So there's nothing you would have done differently? I'm not so sure I would have 
done anything differently. What I believe that parties, political parties should do differently is to engage more women in the process. And you feel you did that leadership. with your, your, you feel you engaged I tried in hard. And the truth be told, and I'm sure that um, Senator Faulkner can attest to this, I brought in more young persons than at any other time. What was it like working and being a part of Michael Manley's government? Oh. What was Michael Manley like? Oh, he was easy to work with. And if there's any prime minister in Jamaica that loved me, it was Michael Manley. I'm not saying the others didn't love me, because PJ was very nice and thing to me. But Michael Manley had a different kind of personality mm -hmm. from the calm, quiet, what brilliant PJ. Mm -hmm. I remember I was in my constituency and I got a call that the leader was to go to, that's Michael mm -hmm. Manley, to country. I think it was Trelawney. I don't remember if it was St. Alain or Trelawney. It's a long time. But, and he said, where's Portia going to be meeting me? And they said, she's not going. We didn't tell her. But they called me. I said, um, Mr. Manley looking for you. I said, tell him I'm in the constituency. So they told him. He said, tell her to leave constituency now. So I rushed home. Had to get into the bath again. Changed. Then I called him. He said, where are you now? I said, home. He said, all right, meet me at such and such a point. And he was very angry with them that they didn't tell me he was going to country and I should be there as well. <laughs> so he, 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 I think, had a lot of love and respect for me. I remember they asked him about me. And he said, who are you talking about, Portia? Oh, Portia is a little tigress. <laughs> <laughs> but anywhere he was going, <laughs> in like rural Jamaica and so if he was going to certain meetings. He wanted you with He you. asked, do you call Portia? What's next for Portia Simpson Miller? I have a, I have a good project coming up. Mm -hmm. I understand there are persons, including outside of Jamaica, uh, asking questions about what I would do. But I believe in the interest of the young people of the country and the girls and the boys coming up that they should hear my story. Girl from Woodhall to Jamaica House. The journey. Are you going to write a book or are you going to go across the island? No, I'm going to, I'm going to, do, I'm going to do my story. You're going to write a book? Yeah, I'm going to do the book. Wow. And, and there are people who volunteer to assist as well. Do you have any idea when this will happen? Uh, can't say yet. I know that. I know that there's one educational institution that asks if I would allow them to do it. Mm -hmm. I've not responded to them yet. Why mm -hmm. I would have an interest to tell my story is that the little girls and boys, whether they are in corporate area, towns, or cities, across Jamaica will know that they too can make it.